Hi and welcome to the first lesson on scientific notation. We're going to be looking at scientific notation, why it's used, and we're going to hopefully know the general form of scientific notation as well. So when we talk about scientific notation, the concept of this sits at the top of a pyramid which relies on the foundational knowledge of index notation, so indices, and significant figures. So I would recommend you get comfortable and revise index notation and significant figures in those videos. So let's jump into index notation first and say we have a number 10 raised to the power of 0. Now we know any number raised to 0 is 1. Likewise we can say any number raised to 1 is just that number itself. So 10 to the power of 1 is 10. And we can say 10 squared is 10 times 10, 100. 10 cubed is 1,000. We can go in the opposite direction, so going from 0 to negative 1, we know that this is going to be 1 over 10 to the positive 1, so that's 1 over 10, which is 0 0.1. 10 to the minus 2 is going to be 1 over 10 squared, which is 1 over 100, and that is going to be 0 0.01. And 10 to the negative 3 is going to be 1 over 10 cubed, which is going to be 1 over 1,000, which is 0 0.001. So now let's look at some numbers using significant figures. The size of an electron here on the model, we know that the size of an electron is this really, really, really small number um, in meters. And we know that we've got three significant figures here. The number of red blood cells in the human body, huge number, trillions. So we've got two significant figures here. Uh, how about this? The nearest galaxy to our own. Now this is quite literally an astronomically large distance. So we've got three significant figures here uh, and many, many zeros. So you can see all of these numbers are, well to write them down first of all, it's really long. It takes a lot of digits to, to express these. So they're either really small with lots of decimal places or really large. So scientific notation solves a problem of writing down huge numbers in a compact form. And I'll start with an example. Let's take this distance of a galaxy here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the three significant figures here, and we're going to remove, take the decimal point, which is at the end here, and we're gonna shift it all the way between the two and the three there. Now, we've moved the decimal point there, because now we're going to multiply it by 10. And how many times we multiply it by 10? So let's have a think. The decimal point is now between this 2 and 3. If we multiply it by 10 once, so 10 to the power of 1, it's going to move one place to the right. And it's going to go between the 2, the 3, and the 6. If we multiply it by 10 squared, so 100, it's going to be here. So if we multiply it one more time by 10, so 10 to the power of 3, it's going to go here. So we'll get 2,360. But we want to move it all the way to the end. So we have to count how many decimal places we move it. So we've got 2, then we've got another 3, 5, then we've got another 3, 8, then we've got another 3, 11, we've got another 3, 14, then we've got another 3, 17. So we have to multiply it by 10, 17 times. And that's where that comes into it. So it's 10 to the power of 17. Now this is the exact equivalent of this number except this is in scientific notation. And as you can see, it's much more compact and easier. Look how small it is on, on the screen in comparison to this. So a really useful tool. Let's have another example. Oh yeah, you can't forget your units. So this is in kilometers, so just put the kilometers at the end. How many red blood cells? We've got 25 trillion red blood cells. So we're gonna take the two and the five. And remember, the decimal point is here, and we're gonna shift it between the two and the five. And what we wanna do is we wanna multiply it by 10. So how many times do we have to? So we've got one, then it's another three, four, another three, seven, another three, 10, then another three, 13. So it's gonna multiply it by 10, 13 times. So 10 to the power of 13. And let's take the electron. So now we've got a tiny number, a lot of decimal places. So if we're going to shift this decimal point between the 2 and the 8, let's have a look at this. So 2.82. 2 
So we've got the decimal point here, but we want to move it back in the opposite direction this time. We're going, uh, we're adding decimal places. So this is the same. So if we're between the 2 and the 8, and we divide it by 10, which is the same as multiplying it by 10, 1 over 10, so 10 to the negative 1, we are going to move it one place to the left. If we're multiplying it by 1 over 10 squared, so 10 to the negative 2, we're going to go two places. So we're actually going to be multiplying it by 10 with a negative index, and we're going to see how many places we need. So from there to there, if you count these, we are going to have to move it 17 places to the left. And as you see, we've got a negative index right here. So the general form for scientific notation states that for a number to be in strict scientific notation, it'll look like a times 10 to a power of n, where a has to be between 1 and 10. So it has to be between 1 and 10. So no, so it can't be 10. Because in this case, if it was 10, the decimal point would have to go between the 1 and the 0. And n has to be an integer. So 1, 2, 3, 4, or negative 1, even 0. So scientific notation helps with calculations involving really large or really small numbers. And on your calculator, you'll find a button right here, which is times 10 to a power. So we're going to be using this button on the calculators.